Hey, I'm Nora. I work at City Bureau. Um, I'm the Documenters Network. My full title, it's soon to be shortened, thankfully, but I have the longest title at the organization. Um, I'm the Documenters Network Resource and Engagement Coordinator. So I um, support and engage with the network staff um, and documenters across the network, um, which I'll talk more about tonight, like what that actually is. Um, maybe just to say a little something about myself. Uh, my background actually is not in journalism at all. I studied um, sustainable urban development um, and I also have a background in cultural anthropology. Um, so I, I really came to this organization very green and learning a lot about um, civic tech and uh, community journalism. Um, so tonight, uh, just kind of a little agenda for you. We'll do some introduction into City Bureau, uh, Documenters Network, although it's great that all of you, or a lot of you have already heard of them. Um, and then we'll talk about the setup and systems of the network, um, and then go into the product and tools that kind of come out of the network. Uh, I'll do a little wrap up, and then I look forward to the Q&A with all of you. All right, um, I like to use kind of a uh, little in-between slides. So when you see this, we're going to be transitioning into the next session. Um, so we're going to start with a little introduction into City Bureau and Documenters Network. So City Bureau is a nonprofit civic journalism lab. Um, it was founded in 2015, and it was a response to the way media historically was, has operated in Chicago. Um, they're trying to reimagine the way that community members interact with journalism um, and vice versa to create a more rep representative and collaborative media. Um, so there are three main ways that City Bureau does this. Um, there's the public newsroom, um, and that's a space for dialogue for anyone who kind of walks through the door. So it can be community members, grassroots organizers, um, sometimes uh, um, government officials. Um, and then there's a civic reporting program, um, and it's a fellowship opportunity for emerging journalists and residency uh, for journalists committed to community-based journalism. Um, it's a great opportunity for the fellowship in journalism, but it's also a great network of people who, after they finish the fellowship, they all stay connected and resource with each other. Um, and then there's the documenters. Um, so maybe somewhat confusing, but there's the Chicago Documenters Program, and then what I'm talking about tonight is the Documenters Network, which includes the Chicago Documenters. Um, and that gets people to learn uh, skills typically reserved for journalists through trainings, practice, um, and it's creating a public record uh, of what our local government is doing uh, in all of those meetings. So I just wanted to give some faces to the documenters team. Um, I think the last time uh, we talked about the documenters here at Chi Hack Night, it was Daryl who was presenting and just talking about Chicago documenters. Um, so that's Daryl. He's the co-founder of City Bureau and uh, the founder of the Documenters Network. Um, he's the director of National Impact at City Bureau. Um, and then there's Jody. Uh, she's the Do Documenters Network deputy director, um, and she's really steering the growth and thinking about the build out of the network. Um, Max, um, I guess I should also say like Jody is based in Atlanta um, and then Max is based in Brooklyn and he's the director of services who implements a lot of the expansion um, and directs the services of all the sites. Um, and then there's me. All right, um, I'm curious, raise your hand if you've attended a public meeting. Okay, cool. And then raise your hand if you knew where to look for the meeting minutes and information. All right, all right. I'm not gonna lie, that's more than I thought <laughs> that I would see. Um, but yeah, so there is a problem and I wanna give you this context as to sort of how the Documenters Network formed and, and came to be. Um, you know, local government bodies hold these meetings that are often in weird times of the day. Sometimes, you know, the agenda is posted last minute, um, you know, the list goes on. Uh, so a vast majority of these meetings don't often get media attention. So there's no record of what is being decided on, talked about like during these meetings, which often impact a lot of people. Um, so there's gaps in this reliable local information and it lim limits uh, informed civic engagement. Disengagement then allows for increased corruption, um, polarization, mistrust, I think the list goes on. 
So Documenters is a participatory journalism network um, building a more equitable future for local media. We're actually training and paying people to engage in local accountability. Um, this is City Bureau's like theory of change. And sort of the, the big one is, you know, we inform, we engage, and then we equip. Equip is the big one. Um, equipping people with the tools and resources to continue this cycle of informing and engaging. Um, so the Documenters Network was founded in Chicago with City Bureau, sort of started around when City Bureau um, was established in 2015. So again, City Bureau is housing Chicago Documenters and then also the Documenters Network. Um, we, the Documenter Network team, um, partner with local organizations and groups to launch the local programs. So in the next few sections, I'll kind of talk about the setup and the systems that we use to kind of support all this growth. Um, and just to give you maybe like a little timeline, so there was Chicago in 2015 that emerged. Um, in 2018, Detroit launched. Um, they originally launched with a different set of groups and it moved over to Outlier uh, Media. And then there's um, Cleveland was the next one in 2020 uh, with Neighborhood Connections. Um, last fall, they moved over to their own uh, newsroom, Signal Cleveland, which is really exciting. Um, so that newsroom is very much like rooted and uh, like uh, launched, I guess, uh, with Cleveland Documenters. Um, Minneapolis joined the Documenters Network in January 2022, and they part or we partner with um, Pillsbury United Communities. And so last fall was our first uh, cohort. Like previously, this was just one-off programs getting launched, but last fall we were able to do a group. Um, so that was Fresno Land, um, Canopy Atlanta, Omaha, um, with the Reader and Omaha Institute for Nonprofit Journalism. Um, and right now we're in the process of launching two more sites um, with Resolve Philly and Dallas Free Press, which you can see on the map. Um, so there's gonna be more sites joining throughout the year. Um, you know, previously the sites were launched solo and now we're really trying to um, stick with this cohort launch, um, partly because the network team has like grown so much and we actually have capacity to do this. Um, and then also we really enjoy sort of like the cohort co-learning and co-struggling with each other um, and a lot of resource sharing. Um, now I'm gonna move into the systems and setup of the network. And we're gonna look at how all of these orgs and sites are, are launched. Um, and then what products and processes sort of sustain them. Uh, so last summer, City Bureau was awarded the Stronger Democ Democracy Award uh, for the Documenters Network. So that network allowed uh, the network to really, you know, strengthen its work in Chicago while also expanding to other cities. Um, we hope that it's sort of like a model that can be replicated uh, across, nation, across the nation. Um, and so as I previously mentioned, there's the first cohort that launched Fresno, Omaha, Atlanta. Um, and going forward, we just continue to uh, do the cohort um, structure. Um, so these are the like four main parts of the cohort planning. There's the site development, um, and that's including you know looking at how the program fits into local team structure, um, potential funding, and then also talking about the impact of the program locally. Um, the pre-launch consists of building out the scrapers, which is pulling in all of the public media. Uh, meeting information into the website, documenters.org, um, which I will continue to say several times throughout tonight. Um, and then if needed, hiring staff uh, happens at this point too. And the network has a lot of templates that uh, these local sites can use for hiring and like setting up all of that. Um, and then local staff practice at this point, like the actual meetings, they go attend the meetings and figure out kind of how it feels and the different resources that they wanna start setting up. Um, onboarding consists of a four week orientation with all of us, the network team. Um, this time we start identifying community partners, including um, all the local media partners as well. Uh, and we start scheduling all the documenters trainings and events. Um, hopefully more in person. Most of them have been virtual. Um, and then launch. 
Um, and these are the systems that um, we use to kind of support the network. So there's Basecamp, which is the sort of central communication hub for um, the network team and the network staff. And I know I'm using a lot of network and staff and site and local, so um, please feel free to ask questions if you need any clarifying with that. Um, but yeah, the Basecamp is where we share resources across the network with staff. Um, there's a lot of templates on there, like I said. Uh, there's like some collective learning. Um, and then Airtable is what we use for our data and metrics. Um, it's sort of the central tracking hub for uh, the whole program. And something we're working on right now is like a dashboard for each local program to use that they can easily grab different metrics for their program. Um, and then GitHub for the code base and all the technical pieces. Um, you can check out cityscrapers.org for more of the technological build out of the website if you're interested. Um, and then uh, Google Drive is what we use for all of the documents, images, files, uh, all, all the good stuff. Um, the documenter's notes are completed on the Google Drive, uh, or I'm sorry, on a, like a Google document. Um, and it's all the same across the network. However, like local sites can add different resources to the template or even restructure it. Um, and then Twitter we use for uh, the live tweeting of, of meetings. Like maybe you've seen the threads out there from the different cities. Um, and it's just a live account for people who don't want to wait for the published notes. And then documenters.org is the main central source of the program. Um, it's where the program staff create assignments, publish notes, communicate with other documenters. Um, anyone can view the notes. Uh, you don't have to become a documenter to view the notes. Um, and yeah, but if you want to become a documenter, you sign up on the website um, and then you attend an orientation and you can get started. So uh, documenters can then talk to each other on the forum on documenters.org. Um, it's a space where they can, yeah, talk to each other, share resources, share uh, job opportunities, um, get to know each other. Um, as Max, uh, the director of services, likes to say in orientation, there's no right way to run the documenters program. Um, the network team supports and creates the systems and templates, but we really love seeing the local sites and the local programs remix the program with their own kind of flavor needs and like, the communities that they're engaging with. Um, so here's an example of the varying documenters flyers for programs in Chicago, which we kind of consider our season site. Obviously, they've been around the longest. Um, and then there's Atlanta, the newer site. Um, there's a common thread in branding, but we, again, we like really encourage the local programs to just kind of take it, remix it, um, and make it their own. And then these are some of the um, Twitter uh, handles. Sorry, I. <laughs> When I started at City Bureau, I was like, do I need to get Twitter? Um, I, I still feel somewhat uh, foreign with it. But yeah, these are the Twitter handles here, and you can see all the difference in the branding, which is great. Um, so yeah, we keep uh, the network, I'm sorry, the network team keeps like a whole list of the different resources and templates that we've created. Um, we try to mark the spaces for the local sites where they can you know, take it, remix it, um, make it their own, and then we try to note where the technical pieces for us that they would need support from us on. Um, and something we're still working on and trying to develop is like a regular cadence of reviewing all these templates and making sure that everything's up to date and transparent and actually useful for the local programs. All right, um, let's look at the components of the network. Um, some of the things that are coming out of it, like the tools, resources, and projects, um, and partnerships. Um, so the Documenters Network is a website, a civic side hustle, um, community, and published content. So as I said before, it's really great to kind of watch the local sites uh, take these, these parts and really make it their own. Um, you know, the website is a searchable database for the public agencies, the meetings, and all the decisions that are being made. Um, it's really the hub for the documenters uh, in the documenters network. Um, and so yeah, these are paid opportunities. We call it a civic side hustle. Um, all documenters are paid for their note taking. They're also paid for all the special assignments, um, surveying, um, any work that is part of the program. 
And then, yeah, people are building this collective civic knowledge. Um, they're building, hopefully, a sense of belonging. And local programs hold community of practices. That's what we call them. Um, where documenters are allowed to, or documenters are brought in to share, um, Skillshare, kind of similar to what this event is. Like, there's a learning portion, and then there's like breakout sessions where they all can like share and hear what's going on in their cities. Um, and then, yeah, double, the documenters' notes are published content. So um, there's newsletters, there's uh, different summaries on their websites, there's uh, the infographics, voter guides, all kinds of things. And yeah, I'm going to just show you in the next few slides just some examples of what I'm talking about because I feel like I'm just saying words at you, but here are some of the examples. So this is the website um, on right, left, on your right, left, okay, on your left. Um, and yeah, it's a searchable uh, database. So in that search bar, you can type in different things like transportation or affordable housing, and it'll search within the notes and agencies and pull up all the things that you want for those, for what you're searching for. Um, and then there's like these, the newsletters where you can also um, sign up to, uh, you can sign up for the newsletters on the website. Um, and this is the Chicago Documenters Newswire. Uh, I'm just curious, is anyone here a subscriber to the, the Newswire? Awesome. Great. Um, yeah, and they just did a really great revamp of the whole newsletter where they um, surveyed readers and did a redesign to better fit like the people that are reading it. Um, and yeah, uh, so like I said before, there are some programs that like post the notes on the website that is maybe a little bit different from a newswire, but more of just like briefs from uh, the documenter's notes, and then they have links directly to them. All right, and then here are some examples of the different tools that are coming out of the program that are navigating local government. Um, so the top left here, there's uh, the Chicago documenters created this open government report card where they, um, where they assigned a grade uh, to over 100 different um, government agencies. Um, and that was created off of data collected during the documenters' assignments. So when documenters are submitting their notes, there's a checklist that they go through um, for every meeting. Um, and yeah, Chicago used that data and created this kind of report card. And then similarly, um, Cleveland used that data to kind of create this infographic about the public meeting experience. Um, and then the bottom left, there's the a voter guide in Detroit. Um, that was actually pitched by a, a Detroit documenter and they were able to, yeah, create this whole piece that was both documenters' uh, work and um, research and then also the outlier media um, organization work with them to publish it. And for me, I really love watching just the connection that's happening uh, between the documenters at community events. Um, it's a great space to just watch sort of the sense of belonging that they're experiencing, but then also all the like resource and skill sharing that's happening. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to note that there's a lot of fun happening. There's uh, some fun like budget bingo on Twitter. I don't know if anyone played that. Um, and Detroit and Cleveland have hosted fun sort of like mayoral speech viewing watching parties where they get to like, sort of like VH1. I don't know if anyone watched those shows where uh, you just kind of comment, you, you add commentary to something's happening. Um, and that's what they did, it was pretty fun. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch of in-person events finally happening. Um, the, the timeline of a lot of these sites getting launched was during the pandemic. So it's been really great to watch them do different in-person activities. And then, yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to the documenters. Um, I mean, you know, Tila, Sonia, and Samantha are just great examples of um, documenters who've developed different skills, um, led special projects, and built some civic engagement in their communities. So documenters are, you know, collaborating on these newsletters. Um, they're editing notes. They're pitching articles. Um, some are actually using community surveys to get more engaged with their community and understand what they need. Um, and then there's a lot of, you know, 
the unseen relationship building, and I like to note that because I think there's a lot of stuff that we don't see or hear about, um, and I think that's where maybe some of the power really lies. And yeah, so they also, uh, the Documenters Network really supports a collaborative local media network as well. So local, do do local documenter programs are developing um, this intentional cooperative and collaborative relationship with the local media partners. Um, we hope that it, you know, kind of tr transcends the traditional silos that are happening in journalism um, and adding a kind of supplemental civic and journalistic work in the different communities and regions. And yeah, time to wrap up. Last slide. Um, just to kind of wrap it all up, the Documenters Network is growing. So two sites, Philly Resolve and Dallas Free Press are onboarding and set to launch uh, this month, and more are joining later this year. We're still figuring out sort of the timeline of uh, the next couple of cohorts, um, and the network team is growing. So just a you know plug to check City Bureau's website um, and socials to keep up on all the hiring that's happening. Um, so our network systems, processes, tools are constantly evolving and expanding. Um, we continue to watch all the remix of these programs locally. And I think for me, it's watching the Documenters Network being woven again and again, resulting in more connection, um, shared knowledge, and movement towards participatory journalism. As the Documenters Network grows, we're reflecting and hoping to implement more uh, on accessibility, um, especially in terms of the digital divide, expansion beyond the city, thinking about like rural indigenous land. Um, and then the varying ways that we can support people and organizations who want to start documenters programs, um, but maybe don't have the full funding in ways that we can support that. Um, this was a pick of our first documenters staff summit, which was last fall. And we look forward to planning another one this year, um, which is wild and plenty more with as new cohorts join. Um, yeah, so check out documenters.org. Um, it has a whole list of all the upcoming workshops with the Chicago documenters. They're doing a community practice tomorrow, I think, at the City Bureau office. Um, they're going to look at affordable housing and mayoral candidates. Uh, and they do have some upcoming uh, in-person and virtual orientation if you're interested in becoming a documenter. Um, and yeah, thank you so much again, Derek and the Shyak team. and. Can do Q and A. Hello, thank you. Can you say uh, something a little more about some of the biggest challenges that you faced? Yeah, um, I think some of the biggest challenges that we're currently facing is the sort of tension that's happening between the network and the local sites. And I, I try, I'm using tension more as, um, I think they're, we're still figuring out the different, um, you know, workflows and uh, scheduling and all of those like operational pieces that I think have historically been mostly contained in like the local sites because, you know, Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland started all on their own. And now that it's becoming bigger with this network, um, there's just, you know, that tension of trying to figure out the right way uh, to move forward. Um, I think some other things, like I mentioned, that I, we are thinking about is the digital divide. And are we actually reaching the people that we are saying we want to reach? Um, we're still working out, you know, those partnerships that we can make um, within the local, uh, I guess, like, you know, local groups or libraries, um, still trying to set that up. I will say that I think with the pandemic, it sort of halted some of the movement that we were making in that. Um, and I think now we're still trying to work through it. Um, yeah, those are kind of two that come, come to mind. Very cool project. Thanks for sharing with us. Um, I, I was just wondering, like, just like rough numbers, like about how many like total documenters do you have in Chicago? Of those, about how many are like active? And then also, kind of on the other side, like what percentage of meetings are you covering? Like, is there like a list of like we want people for these, and do those generally get filled up, or like just stuff like that generally? Yeah, um, I can't say exactly how many documenters are in Chicago. I I do think it's 
maybe up to 700. Um, now, when you say active, that's something that I think we still talk about, like what is, how do you define active? Because some, one of the sort of like beautiful parts of this program is that people come in and out. So like documenters who started maybe in 2018, some of them are coming back like now because they have the time and capacity to do it. So um, something we think about is calling documenters who are taking assignments like live now is actually call, calling them note taking documenters. Um, and then on the flip side, there's documenters who don't take any assignments at all and are just there for like the relationship building. Um, you know, in Cleveland, they had a documenter or they have a documenter who's never taken an assignment, but she's always at every community event. Um, so it's kind of something that we think about, like how do we define active? Um, I think the, the dashboards that we're looking at with the, the data that's gonna give sort of that live feed for local sites will really be helpful for them. Um, and then your question about, yeah, the kind of total meetings coverage. That's a great question. I, I don't know that, but I know that um, each local site, and especially Chicago, is really taking into account like the, the meetings that they're covering. Um, they're not sort of uh, cherry picking, you know, whatever random meeting, but they're really trying to be intentional about the meetings that they're covering. Thanks for the presentation. It was really good. Um, I just had a question around like the consumer aspects of uh, documenters. Um, how are people supposed to kind of like consume all the information that's coming in and what does it look like going from, you know, meeting notes to um, actual articles being written about different topics? Like, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what, what is the flow of going from like the meeting to uh, creating the article to actually being consumed by a user and, and how are those like, um, people actually reading the information as well? Like, do you have stats on how people usually consume it? Um, yeah, so maybe like to give you like a little lifespan of like how, you know, documenter takes assignment to the publish. Um, the documenter takes the assignment, they cover the meeting, they have that notes template that they follow through. There's a lot of pre-work too that they do um, with researching the, the meeting, the agenda, um, trying to identify maybe any parts that they're not sure of. Um, and then they take the notes. Those are then submitted to the local program sites who then edit, go through, um, comb through the notes. Um, and then they offer, they do offer edits and like feedback to the documenter. Um, and then after sort of their uh, local, um, you know, I don't wanna say standards, but like, you know, how they want to publish notes is, is good to go. It gets published to the website. Um, I will say then in the template, there's some two key areas that really um, feed into the creating um, articles or like follow-up work, and that's the uh, questions. So there's a, a section where documenters can add their questions for that meeting. You know, like if they're in a police advisory board committee and um, someone presented on some something that they kind of threw in there at last minute, that's a great place for them to add a question of like, what does that presentation look like? Where are those slides? Why didn't they you know, mention this? It's really a place for them to kind of add their voice to. Um, and then there's also a summary section. So they have their full notes, which are like detailed. And then there's a summary section. And that's really for like, as a consumer or someone going on the website, if you don't wanna read through you know, the full detail of the meeting, there's that summary section where you can just like snag what you need. Um, and that'll include you know, like important decisions or um, guest presenters or things like that. Um, and yeah, I th I'd say in general for the, the sites, like that's really the two spaces where they're pulling um, those sp special projects. Um, they're pulling, uh, you know, in Detroit, I'll give another example. Um, they have a really great local media collaborative where they look at the documenter's notes and they pull out from the summary and questions different pieces that they might want to do an, an article on. Um, and they will cite directly the documenter's work, which is great. Um, and I think we're starting to see that in, in other sites as well in terms of like that collaborative process with the other local media, not just within that organization that houses the documenters program. 
Um, yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah, so like, how does it go from, um, like, I, we kind of talked about like the summer period, mm-hmm. um, but like, who kind of aggregates all these? Because I bet there's like so many meetings that happen. So, who like aggregates them? Is there like editing being done on these summaries? And then they kind of like publish an article, or who chooses like this person that covers the meeting has to publish an article on that, or someone else come in and just write an article based on all these summaries that they aggregate together? create like a cohesive story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think it's kind of all of what you said, um, but that we're still working on like the aggregate part. That's something that's sort of new in terms of like tracking the people who are using the the notes and like what they're pulling out. Um, We don't, I would say that's something we don't have is like who's using the notes and pulling out things. I think we have a general idea. You know, there's there's other journalists, there's um, even some lawyers, uh, sometimes like public officers, people who work in local government are looking at it. Um, but yeah, we don't have those sort of like exact numbers, hard numbers to kind of guide or figure out the exact user. Um, Right, yeah, it's more that, uh, you know, yeah, they'll get tagged on Twitter or they get cited in, you know, whatever article that was written based off of it. Um, And sometimes documenters are part of actually writing those articles, um, but usually they're definitely, you know, uh, cited in that article. Um, Yeah, the question from the live stream is, how did the shift to virtual events affect the documenters program and or process? I almost feel not qualified to to answer that because I joined as it was already all virtual. Um, I joined in 2021. Um, But just thinking on some of the things that uh, the Chicago program program people, words are escaping me. Um, India, who's the civic producer with the Chicago documenters has talked about how I think pre-pandemic, um, they could do a lot more in-person trainings. Um, I think, and with that, I think with in-person, there's a lot more, um, you know, natural kind of connectedness that's happening. You know, I think with virtual, the hard thing is that you can tell someone like, you know, you're safe, or um, you know, we want you to go to this public meeting and we want to support you. But because it's virtual, it just creates that kind of like natural. Uh, hard to hard to connect, but in person, there's a lot more just like, you know, we can laugh together, um, we can joke. There's a little more of that like relaxation, um, natural relaxation that happens in person. So I, yeah, I think like just it, you know, affected the, um, the training and the sort of like event structure and flow. Um, yeah, I have a question uh, kind of about the city scraping project. Um, so I remember back when it first started, it was largely like volunteer driven and then got kind of uh, operationalized and professionalized at City Bureau. And I was wondering uh, where that's at now that the uh, network has expanded more and if there are ways for folks to volunteer writing scrapers, or like what the ratio is between like that being volunteer versus non-volunteer work at this point, and like, does City Bureau like coordinate that for other cities, or are they kind of on their own figuring out how many uh, legislative meeting websites they can write scrapers for? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure on like the ratio that's happening right now, but I do uh, believe you can still go to um, cityscrapers.org and um, you know sign up to be part of it. Um, I think. That may be, to speak to the um, first question, that might be a challenge that we're facing and it's trying to kind of figure out as the network is growing and we're adding more sites, which means more scraping and more public agencies, um, we're still trying to figure out the the sort of like sustainable process and all of that. Um, Right now it's still being owned and um, driven by the network team and City Bureau, um, but that's definitely something that uh, we're thinking about as the network expands. Um, You mentioned journalism silos, I think, near the end. Uh, Could you say more about how you're tackling or wrestling with that in particular? Yeah, I I mean, I think with the journalism silos, there's the sort of like embedded, um, you know, 
systemic problem of people sort of, you know, working on their own, um, not talking to each other. And so the kind of the whole, I'd say like core process of the documenters network or like one of the core values is really setting up those conversations. Um, you know, I think also traditionally, you know, journalism is, um, and I'm talking about this as someone who has no background in journalism, but um, journalism is traditionally so driven by the person or the entity writing the article or the writing the piece. And the Documenters Network is really trying to kind of break down that, uh, that wall between the person writing, you know, the piece and then the community and the people who they're, they're writing for or about. Um, yeah. Um, so my question is, do you see any areas of opportunity for using um, sort of like new cutting edge technologies like artificial intelligence to help with, you know, augmenting the summarization of, uh, you know, things that you're documenting? Yeah, that's definitely a topic of conversation amongst the network staff. Um, we, we do these like monthly network calls where all the staff are on there and we talk about things like that, AI. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna speak more like hearsay what they've shared in that I think they're still, uh, we're hesitant about some of the AI capabilities in terms of really capturing what's happening in the meeting um, and also making sure that that's accessible on, on the, on the um, outcome or like what's coming out of those notes. Meaning like, I, I think there's a hesitation to use it because it's adding another layer to the process of like editing the notes and publishing the notes. Um, but it's something that like definitely is on, on top of our brain that we're, we're constantly talking about and, and thinking about. Um, Max, the director of services, just attended an AI conference um, and I haven't heard back yet of kind of like the different learnings and the different components that we could potentially start exploring, yeah, for the Documenters Network. Nora, thank you so much. This is wonderful. Uh, thank you for being here, especially on your birthday. I won't, I won't force us singing happy birthday, but please give Nora a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.